Hello. Today I'm going to show you about replacing the fence on my Delta 6000 portable table saw. I bought this about four years ago. It's a pretty good Delta saw. It's great because it's on legs and wheels and you can move it around. What's not great about it was the fence. The fence was really shaky. I mean literally shaky. You could lock down the fence which was a locking mechanism on the front that would squeeze um, kind of a hard plastic uh, stop on the back rail and you would think that would be pretty stable but you could actually move that back part about a you know, quarter inch left or right sometimes maybe even maybe three-eighths of an inch um, it made for some pretty wobbly and lousy cuts fortunately for me it broke about six weeks ago it had a very small little piece that was very narrow, a little over, I think about three-eighths of an inch thick, and it just broke. Um, and it was partly due to, there was um, a pin that held that lever in place, and the pin had come out, and it was moving back and forth, and I kept putting back in, I think I torqued it. But anyway, so what happened was, I bought a Vega U26, 26-inch, um, fence and I'm very happy with it and I'm going to show you about how I went about putting it on and how happy I am with it. Stay tuned. As you can see this pin has come out and this is moving all over the place. I'm going to put it back in but it slips out and as you can see, that makes this wobble all around, which probably didn't help this uh, skimpy little piece of metal any because it was probably torquing it as well. To me, this is a really poor design. So here's the saw fence. Some people have complained it's not packed very well. I'll say it's pretty heavy. I'm guessing it's about 50 pounds. It's about uh, four feet long in this packing. It's got a nice, uh, looks like a two by four block on the end, stapled in, holding it in. So I'll unbox it. And we'll see how it looks. So it's packed pretty well. A couple of pieces of styrofoam. Didn't really move around a lot. Hardware. Take that out. Instructions. So going to be a uh, challenge. First thing you'll notice about this saw is it doesn't look like it's going to accommodate this long 26 inch outfeed. Um, and it's not. It'll make some modification. Now to move the, remove the front and back rails what you have to do is you have to take your four millimeter hex wrench and remove two screws under here. They're actually attached to a little metal bracket here, which when you unscrew them will fall down into this. And when you take the caps off the end, uh, they'll fall out. So I went ahead and did that. And then you have to make sure that this is unlocked, not locked because you have to slide these down you can actually slide them off and there are four screws on the side there, I've already taken a couple of them out and you do that front and back and remember this uh, knob here tightens both sides it's going to send this little thing in and out 
so you won't be able to move the rails back and forth to take out the screws unless you loosen that. I believe it's uh, up as loose. So here's installation instructions for the rails and it said that uh, if you don't have room to put nuts in the back which you can on this Delta saw you have to tap and die it or tap it out using a tap and die but there is room the only problem is this uh, hole on the left is a little bit too close um, if you make it eight inches from the saw blade on the right side so I went about eight and three quarters inches over and then measured 16 inches out and that way I missed uh, a protrusion on the back of this so that I can use nuts so what I did was um, I measured over eight and a quarter I'm sorry eight and three quarters inch with this square from the blade as shown then I used another square butting up against that and it doesn't have to be totally square because you're just making a mark and I made my mark and this is uh, it's a one and a half inch wide so half of that is three quarters of an inch so I made a mark on both sides here and then you measure 16 inches on this side so let me get it three quarter inches and there's my marks Open it. So make my little uh, indention here. On both sides. Gonna start with a small bit. Eleven sixty fourth to make a little pilot hole. I'm going to put a 5 16th bit in next 
which just accommodates the bolts. By the way, if you're using a, uh, a drill with a chuck, which I think is becoming more and more rare, it's hard to find good chucks. Pick this up at Harbor Freight. It's uh, basically a ratcheting chuck. Gets a little stuck. So I just got a ratchet on both sides. I think that's 3 8 but I'm not sure. Makes it a lot easier. This uh, cast aluminum is pretty easy to drill. You could probably do it with a cordless drill. As you can see, it will accommodate that bolt. Okay, just by dumb luck, um, I didn't make this too high. It says to put this an eighth of an inch below the top, which I did. I measured down three quarters of an inch. I'd recommend uh, lowering this hole down to... Uh, an inch and that way you've got plenty of room to play up and down on this and I showed you the long bolt that's about two and three eighths inch uh, that's wrong it's actually the short bolt so the assembly pretty simple Put that there, put that there, and this adjustment screw goes in the bottom, which is tapped. And simply insert, you're going to put a star washer and a nut on the back. Where I put that was a tight squeeze. Because of a, an extrusion there. There's also a, some plastic uh, adjustment screws that are in here. It was in the way on that one. That basically... I think they tighten up uh, the old fence. I had to back this one out. I'll just go ahead and take that all the way out. And then I'm going to uh, put the other one in. I'm going to be taking uh, this uh, P2 
piece out that was a uh, pointer from the prior fence in just a sec. And it says, I've set this at an eighth of an inch. And it says to set this an eighth of an inch from the top. So I shall hand tighten. Helps if you're not clumsy. So it's a little too high. I think it's right on the edge of uh, the bevel on this saw. Uh, yeah, so if you uh, can see this. That runs right along. There's a little bevel right here, beveled edge, a little 45 degree, and it is right on there. And I mentioned taking this guide off. Won't be needing that. And I'll put the other one on. easiest way to do this is to read the instructions and basically this fits on behind this and it hangs down lower than an eighth of an inch and what you do is you screw this screw up to get it uh, micro adjusted to an eighth of an inch this is for the back which is what I'm going to do now Of course, the easiest way to do that is just to put your square on the table and start raising it up until it just raises your square off the table, and that's an eighth of an inch. Making sure this is level. Turns out it's just a hair below the edge of the bevel on this table.
So you can see I've got this on loose right now. It goes up and down. That's why I said you should probably drill that hole an inch down from the top. I did three quarters and it's a tight fit. And then what I do is I put my, I adjusted this uh, combination square to an eighth of an inch, lay it flat on there, and then I start tightening this bottom screw until it just lifts the square off the table. And that's one eighth inch, and then you can tighten it. Make sure to put your flat washer on the front. and your star washer on the back. Next with your uh, half inch socket, unscrew these bolts, uh, I'd say about an inch, and they slide onto your wrist, and you can hand tighten it. This is a stainless steel tube. I'm guessing about, let me get the micrometer out a minute. I think it's about eighth of an inch thick. And you can see the inches on there. And you can see it's about level on this, uh, the top of the saw. And I move it here. It's the same degree of level. The floor is not level, but the bubble's touching the left mark on both ends, both on the table and off the table. Now on the back rail, you got a problem. You got this little doodad that tightens down the uh, extending shelf. What it does is it pushes it in and out. But this has to be flush. But don't worry, don't get your hacksaw out. There's an adjustment in here. I'll show you a sec. Okay, so to get that uh, adjustment rod out of position, First slide your extension feed in the back of your saw out to give you access. Get either two 10 millimeter wrenches or two small crescent wrenches. Grab one on this big nut and the easiest way is to reach under your saw. Grab that one. And grab this one. Let me give it a little more light in here. I already loosened it, as you can see. And then crack these two apart. Remember, uh, lefty loosey. When you crack it apart, that'll make this uh, rod be able to screw in. 
And if it's tight, grab you some pliers and just pull it down and that will make it loose. And then what you do, screw this uh, right nut all the way out and then you start, you got to hold this down this nut and then screw this in and I'll show you what's happening on the outside and it's disappearing into the recess and then you mount your back uh, back reel in. I'm going to tighten these back up just to keep them sliding. Now remember on the front there was some uh, nylon adjustment screws in here to make it flat. You got to remove these Now that little sucker on the uh, right side is kind of hard to get to. I have to use a uh, an eight millimeter wrench to get down there and loosen it up to get it out of the way. Okay, to install the back rail, I found it necessary to turn the saw upside down and uh, lay it on the ground. I laid it on top of uh, actually a rubber anti-fatigue mat so it wouldn't scratch the surface. So, we got kind of a couple of problems here. And by the way, I discovered that you know that tricky little part that I had to uh, reach under and unscrew those uh, those bolts that extended out that locked the rails in place? They're a lot easier to get to if you uh, turn this upside down, so I'll try to put a caption on that scene. So here's the issue. What I did was I took the back rail and I turned it 90 degrees to where the holes would be standing up so I can see where they're located. The problem is there's a lot of crud in the way. It's starting at this corner going in. The upright to the stand is there. This is a, a bracket that holds the uh, that uh, locking position for the extension piece that we removed. I guess I could take that out but I really didn't want to. So what I did was I found the first place that I could uh, drill a hole through the side of the saw to match this hole. The problem is there's just no spot to do it down here because there's a lot of stuff in the way. It's just impossible. So what we're going to have to do well, it shouldn't be too big a deal so we're going to have to drill a new hole through the bar to accommodate it to go, let's say about right there, um, just inside that outpeat extension arm. So we'll do that next. To mark these, what I did was I took the bolts and you can see that should make it pretty clean right there. There's a little piece of something sticking up there, but I believe I can clear it. I'll check, double check that. And right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a Sharpie and 
mark the position of that hole there and also right there well as you can see I had to drill another hole why because this guy sits on this outfeed and I didn't want to lose my outfeed and it doesn't match up with the hole so I had to move it over oh well it's gonna be covered up anyway so um, actually I give you the exact dimensions center of that hole is exactly one and let's see it's about one and three quarters inch from the side of this uh, t-track right here yeah one and three quarters this one over here It's three quarters of an inch to the center of that hole. Now to line up the hole on the uh, left side here, you got a slot here going back and forth. I pushed it all the way to the right and then came back about half an inch or a little bit just to give myself a little leeway. But it's easy piece of masking tape over where the hole is put my square right in the middle of the hole transfer it to the marking so I'll know where to drill the hole on the bar next I put uh, pieces of masking tape over the two uh, existing holes and I drew a point in the center of the holes now I'm gonna draw a line from the center of those holes across this one so I'll know where to center my drilling drill bit now to drill that little sucker put this on the drill press because it's uh, about uh, 20 about two and a half uh, millimeters thick and you got to drill through both sides in order to make sure it was true um, it was tough this is a uh, tough steel um, the other thing is when I put this in uh, t-track slid fine on this side but on this side and that's why you should check both sides kitchen right at the end so I've lowered just a hair and you can lower it some more so and I kept my outfeed here so how does that look pretty good <laughs> now when I initially looked at this um, I thought these are going to go out too far but uh, fortunately, when I close this up, it doesn't bog me in the head because there's nothing across here. So I can use it even though it's a bit long. Okay, now comes the fun part. We're finally going to be able to put the fence on these rails. 
So let's get started. First it says to remove the uh, end cap screws. These are just put on with uh, Phillips heads. You do this so that you can uh, take this uh, cover strip off and mount it to the locking mechanism. Must have used the air hammer to get these on. the uh, for mica this gonna screw the uh, locking mechanism knob down which was in a separate packet and then you have to take these uh, mounting screws and set the tip it over and insert these with your Allen wrench, but I'm using this uh, um, long one that's got kind of this rounded end, so it won't hold it in. So I'm just going to kind of drop them here and work them in with it upright, not on its side. Absolutely unimportant how those go in. And now, for the magic. And I put my clamp down, you put these four spacers on. And this is how you mount it. Well, I've got a tiny glitch here. I thought that wouldn't slide in very well. That's because this little support button that glides along this fence is way out here. So I guess it thought I had a longer table rather than this contractor saw. Fortunately, it's just screwed in with a tapered screw and a Phillips head. So what I'm going to have to do is measure this, drill a hole, I'll do that on my press, and then reinstall it. It says if it's too low or too high, you can adjust it with the spacers. So I place the fence back on the uh, stainless steel bar, and I've used my trusty masking tape to uh, place over the bar. The bar is, uh, the back bar is one and three quarter inches. <coughs> So I'm going to find the middle of that and uh, mark that and then take it my drill press. Oh, it's actually one and a half. So I'm going to set this at three quarters of an inch. So that's where I want to line my hole and drill it. Okay, I have uh, successfully drilled a hole. A lot easier than I thought. Uh, the exact size of the screw, I'm sorry, the drill bit is 5 30 seconds. And I drilled that. It's got a basically kind of a self tapping screw. Screwed right in, no problem. I'll check a level on it, checking the level of the table, 
and check the level of the fence. And it is level. So I'm pleased with that. And although I uh, felt like I kind of screwed up by not seeing that ahead of time, um, I really think that it would have been impossible to exactly place where this button goes without mounting this to the rail and to the, uh, the locking mechanism. So I'm okay with that. Um, so uh, in case your table is not long enough, um, there's a, an easy solution to it. Now it says for the final adjustment, put it over to one of the monitor slots and clamp it down and then screw these down. You have to eyeball it that way, so I thought of a neat way for me to do it. I got this uh, L square, the steel square, and I am going to put it on the inside edge of this miter slot. So now I have a straight edge and I'm leaning it at an angle down there because if you don't, it's not going to, if you, if you put it up on the rail, you're going to be uh, missing it. You're supposed to have 1 16th of an inch clearance in here. I have 1 32nd of an inch, which is fine with me. I think it probably helps keep the sawdust out. So, what you do is you clamp this part down on the head and you adjust this back and forth to where I'm doing it to where it's totally matching and I'm going to tighten it down. It says you should never have to tighten this again. I have a hard time believing that. Yeah, I think you should periodically check it. Although it's got to be 8,000 times better than the old Delta fence, which was just crummy. Wobble test. It's not wobbling. The table wobbles, but the fence doesn't move back and forth. Hallelujah. Now I'm going to put this uh, laminate or formica piece back in and uh, go from there. Now there's a, a rear hold down clamp. It's an optional and it said if you use a, a stock feeder which is one of those wheel things that attaches and they've got screw holes here that um, you know helps feed through um, the, the wood through there you should use it. But I'm going to put it on anyway even though I don't have one because if you notice when I push down on this it raises up. I really don't want to do that. So I put this here and I already checked out, it does not, it does not uh, interfere with my outfeed uh, extension bar that this saw comes with. So I'm going to drill a couple of holes and uh, put that on off camera and uh, get back. Uh, the other thing is that um, I have one complaint. You know, in the, uh, let me move the camera around. When it, when it showed the measurements, you know, it was pretty loosey-goosey. Do it eight to nine inches, blah, 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 and all this kind of stuff. Well, guess what? Um, here's my fence. 
up against the blade. Now that should make this reading in this window be zero. It's not. It's at, it's at the end of the tape and that is zero and it's about one and three quarter inches from the blade. Now, as you know, I was kind of running out of room for places to mount these um, these uh, holders so I really couldn't move it around much um, I started getting into extrusions and other problems uh, over the T-Track so um, Vega's suggestion is well just peel this tape off and put it back on I've not had good luck with that um, you can buy tape I suspect that's what I'll do I'll take this off I'll attempt to redo it, it says you can use contact cement I'm thinking a new tape is going to be necessary. I think you can get them for about $6. I had one on my old one. In fact, I may still have another one lying around. So, let me uh, drill holes for that and I'll continue in a sec. So, this is a micro adjustment. So, let's say I want to put it on 5 inches. Assuming my ruler is correct, which I'll have to do later. And I look at it and say, well, that's not exactly right. I want to move it just to maybe a 32nd of an inch. So what I do is I unscrew this neural knob here. See my finger? And that's moving this uh, little secondary locking device down then I can lock it down unlike this one and I can move it in tiny little adjustments now you have to kind of give it a little push on the back because it's really a lot to move from just a knurled knob and a finger. Unless you're downhill, I guess, or something like that. So, and then once you get in place, you can lock this and screw this back. Lock that one in place too. And as desired, the whole point of this was to have a fence that doesn't wobble on the back. And all I'm doing is moving the whole table. I'm not moving the back of this fence, which is great. And the other thing you'll notice is that there's a discrepancy in length between my front bar and my back bar. Now, if I wanted to re-drill the holes, I could move the back bar back about four inches, which would give me a total like 24 inch wide swath. Nah, I'll see if I need that or not. Um, I've got an old tool stand standing there which is about eight inches below the height of it so really all I need is to build a platform that's going to fit on this. This is a very sturdy stand to uh, kind of level my table out this way. Um, the other thing that I've seen people do is to uh, drill holes underneath these uh, front and back bars and uh, mount boards to it for an outfeed and it should be pretty obvious well I'm not going to do that I'll 
show you real quickly why I'm not going to do that. In order to fold this, I have to be between these bars. So, if I wanted to fold this with uh, some, a board sticking out here, I'm in trouble. So, having uh, a stand to put something on, I think, is a, a great solution. It's another good reason to put uh, the backstop on the fence. Uh, not only keep it from tipping up when you put this in the vertical position to transport it. Obviously that holds the bar on. I don't have to take the bar off and on. I can lock it in place. They recommend adding a sacrificial fence to keep your side of your fence pristine, which I did. You mount it from screws from the other side so that nothing pokes out. But, oddly enough, the screws that they provide have a square head. And if you are like me and you are hunting for five or ten minutes to find that stupid adapter, you think, that's kind of nutty. Why should I use that? It's a plain old three and a half inch deck screw. So, I used uh, three and a half inch deck screws I got from Lowe's with T25 star heads because I've got lots of those and screws are screw. You just push it all the way through there. I decided I wanted to extend the wing on the right side of the saw so I took the wing that I took off on the left side and I'm going to attach it there. Uh, first of all, it's already got a pre-drilled hole that's nice. So I managed to close it up to there. I turned the saw upside down and put it on some MDF and that way um, it'll be flat and that um, is going to make uh, alignment of the wing to the tabletop very, very easily. Very easy. I'm going to, uh, I already did a, took a sharpie and made a hole right there and I'm going to uh, drill through there and I'm going to drill two more holes and then see if I can't attach these to the bar. There was a, a wing over here that uh, I just put another uh, bolt in there and turned it, I'm sorry, uh, a, uh, a bar in there and turned it uh, 90 degrees to help stay on there as well. So let me get those fixed. So here is the uh, shelf edition with the table extension with all three bolts in and some overkill. I put some uh, sliding glass patio door locks on there. I haven't decided if I'm going to try to screw these into this bar or not. I'll see when I flip it over and see how steady it is. This is the underside of the saw near the front and there was this uh, little piece of metal that was bolted down with hex screws that uh, held the old fence on and I really didn't need it anymore so I decided to repurpose it so I took these off and I'll show you what I did with it so I got just a standard little bracket at Lowe's and I turned it 90 degrees and um, laid it across the uh, the two lips of the extension and the main table and that was just a, for a little added support to make sure that it uh, stays plain on the top uh, I used the uh, bottom hole or the one closest to the blade for one bolt and there's nothing to screw the other one in but that's okay really didn't need it well it took a little adjusting but uh, Got it flat. Got another piece that I could 
mount on here or mount on this side. But I'm not sure what I want to do. I think I'll operate it for a while before I decide anymore. And by the way, believe it or not, this ruler slipped right off and slipped back on with no problems. I bought another one on Amazon and I'll put the link in, but uh, I didn't need it, but I'll have it just in case. So here's the saw with the new fence on it. Slides very well. When I put the uh, when I put the back bar on, I noticed that they were sticking out about the same on the left side, but on the right side it was short. And I was concerned about it, but I really didn't need to be, because you can actually extend it beyond that, but it is still held on. It rests on it, but what happens is, and you want to leave this uh, the red plastic on the end because it keeps it from sliding off, and it was no problem to uh, pick it up and put it back on the rail. Uh, I'm very pleased with it. Very, very happy. I'm going to show you, uh, next I'm going to show you about show, uh, folding it up. Now, I rescued these rails from the old fence. And I made this contraption to make sure that I safely kept the fence on. And the reason for that was that uh, the first time I folded it up, I thought I had it locked down, but I didn't. And this uh, wonderful new fence that I just put on went crashing to the floor. Fortunately, all I did was uh, knock it out of alignment just a hair. So it was not an issue, but I decided to make a kind of a fail safe. Which I'll show you. So I took a piece of 2x4, this is just a 2x4 here and a couple of little pieces on there to uh, mount these uh, rails to it. And I used a contour guide and made this. And what I did was I took a little bungee here and made a screw eye and kind of keep this in place. Then I hooked that through the uh, big hole here on each side of this rail. And then hooked the other end of the bungee under there. I had to uh, put some extra blocks on there because I wanted to put two screws down through there to keep it from racking back and forth.
Now that's a perfect cut. I was a little concerned. I was going to put some bolts through this uh, add-on wing through this bar, but I really didn't need to after I put those three uh, locking bolts in. You can see it uh, really doesn't do anything, doesn't flex. I could have moved this bar a little bit, but that seemed to be overkill and it wasn't necessary. So this is my platform to uh, extend the wing on the right side of the power saw. I took a uh, just a piece of plywood and put it on top of this uh, tool stand that I had left over. And it's pretty sturdy. I made a frame out of two by fours, used some brackets, and I also screwed them into the bottom of this. And I anchored the two by fours to the plywood and I anchored the plywood to the uh, frame. And I built uh, this guy over here. Let me show you what I do with him. So I made this to fit inside. And it just slides on. There you have it. A very nice wing for this. And it is flush. So I can actually saw something that's about actually 30 inches in width. I can cut 24 inches. Actually, I can cut farther than that about 26 and a half inches. I hope you liked uh, this little demo about how to replace the really tacky uh, fence on this Delta 6000 table saw. Uh, made it a whole lot better and um, so as usual if you like it pick it. Um, if you subscribe to this channel, you may find uh, out what I do in my day job, which has nothing to do with carpentry. Thanks a lot.